Well, hello everyone. Welcome. You are here for part three of our text help supported Equatio for math and science teachers, where today we are diving into secondary classrooms, the world of grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, 11, 12, even post-secondary. I am Emily Fitzpatrick. I am joining you on behalf of the Cobblestone Collective. I'm here as co-founder and also as a former secondary math teacher um, here in Ontario. And your lineup, they are back for another workshop with us, um, are a whole slew of amazing math educators, also from both the elementary and the secondary lens here. Before we get started, I do want to do a huge shout out to TechSelp, who is the magicians behind not only Equatio, but also bringing this free workshop to you to know and to explore how you can use Equatio in your secondary math and science classrooms. If you are new to our collective here, welcome. We are the Cobblestone Collective. We are um, a network of educators who get just pumped up about great tools you can use in the classroom. And specifically when we're talking math and science, it gets me extra energized. And I know the three individuals here with me today uh, feel the exact same way. We work with teachers and students, educators, anybody kind of within our world of education to help utilize technology more effectively in the classroom. Speaking of the collective, I am not here on my own. I'm actually gonna disappear for a little bit and hand the mic over to these three fabulous individuals. Katie, I'm gonna pass it off to you to introduce the rest of the team. Thank you so much, Emily. Hi, my name is Katie Eklund and I am a technology project facilitator, also former classroom teacher down in Southern California in the United States. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you. And we have two other amazing, amazing people here with us. I'm gonna pass it off to Jonathan to introduce himself. Hey everyone. I know uh, you had us last week or the week before. I'm Jonathan. I work for the Peel District School Board as a resource teacher. And so I'll be your MC, kind of helping out Isabella as she uh, presents her stuff. If you have questions in that form, uh, which we'll show later on, feel, we'll, we'll make sure that those are answered. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Isabella. Thanks, Jonathan. I am Isabella. I am a high school science and math teacher. Uh, currently, I am teaching senior uh, in senior level science. I teach chemistry. I'm also the ed tech uh, integration program coordinator at an independent school in Toronto. So before we start, I we just wanted to acknowledge, especially for, from where I'm from, Toronto, we want to just acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ashinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaty, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. So what's on tap today? Now, um, I'm sure if you are familiar uh, with our YouTube Live, we are just going to grab some of your feedback, just getting yourself used to getting, uh, just getting a hang of this form. Katie is going to show this link that is in the bottom of your screen. Just make sure you type all of that into your browser so you don't even need to type www. Just go into a new tab there and type thecc.plage slash my answer and just answer what grade do you teach or subject. Let's see if we have anything. So as I've mentioned before, I am currently teaching actually grade seven and eight science and then senior level grade 11 and 12 chemistry and previously I have taught you know vectors as well as advanced functions so I'm very excited to talk about how Equatio is helpful in my teaching. I know and, and as you talk about that I'm sitting there going ah the last time I remember high school mathematics no I, I, I love high school mathematics to be honest I just haven't practiced it in such a long time because I've been stuck in elementary but uh, it, it's been great and so we have um, we have some here from grade eight math. I see uh, joining us. We have some grade elevens. Nice. Uh, I think we're gonna have a nice we're gonna have a nice little uh, turnout um, in this group here. And I'm so excited to see uh, what Equatio can do for our high school um, 
and intermediate counterparts here. Amazing. Yeah, perfect. We we have grade 10 science as well as grade 12 chemistry. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so just make sure you always have that Google form on. And if you want to have if you have any questions, just make sure you refresh that Google form and just type in your question there. Um, let's continue on with that Google form. And I just wanted to see how comfortable do you feel with Equatio? I know Equatio has come a very long way since uh, it, it first started. I am still discovering new things because they are adding a lot of different uh, formulas as well as STEM tools to the tool itself. So on a scale from one to five, how comfortable do you feel? I do feel like I was starting out with three and then now I'm definitely like a 4.5. Jonathan, how are you feeling so far? <laughs> Well, I mean, before we started this, I'd probably say four or five, but you know, my mind was blown last week. So I don't know what's going to be happening this week. Five plus perhaps. Things, right? So maybe I'll <laughs> yeah. go down to that three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Like if you have uh, caught the recording last week, we discovered something new and I hope to really feature that today as well. Um, I see that Joshua has mentioned that he's never used it. Yeah, so you are going to have your world rocked today, Joshua, hopefully. Um, yeah, we have two as well, never used it for math, uh, used it sometimes for math, but not science. Thank you so much for sharing that. So again, just keep that Google form on. So if this is your first time in YouTube Live, just as a reminder, we are just a video on your screen. You are more than welcome to click pause and play uh, whenever you feel like. So if you do need to go back, rewind, and go through a particular instruction, feel free to do that. Um, this video will always be on YouTube, so you can always revisit this video. So in terms of what's on tap today, we are going to go through three major things. We're going to go through how are we going to type through equations, and there are different ways of typing out equations for Equatio. We're going to learn how to use graphs. Um, and finally, just using Equatio for assessments, because I know in secondary uh, teachers, we do a lot of assessment as, assessment of learning in terms of formatively assessing our students where they're sitting and if we can address certain misconceptions right then and there. So we're going to show you how we can do that on Google Forms. And then we're just going to go over a couple of classroom applications, and then we're just going to wrap it up with some question and answer. So before we get started, I just wanted to see if there's any particular burning questions that you have with Equatio that we could answer right now. So let's just head on over to that form again. Um, I know that some of you have not heard about Equatio before and are curious to know, but is there a particular need that you are hoping Equatio to answer that particular need, right? So, so maybe potentially we can address that and just keep in mind of that as we're going through those activities today. Katie, is there, uh, as you've worked with some of, you know, a wide range, is there ones that you've, you've stuck with there? Um, well, you know, I think that um, graphing, I, I know we're gonna be talking about it today, so I'm super excited to dive into that because I feel like, um, graphing is really helpful, but also um, some people are a little afraid to kind of dive into it. So I'm really excited to dive into graphing with you guys today and kind of hopefully take myself from more of that four to that five area um, in, that, in that kind of area. I think graphing is a super powerful tool and I'm excited to learn more today. Yeah, and that's something that I really love about Equatio is that the, the graphing calculator is like embedded into it. So then I don't have to go into a different window, take a screenshot of that and then paste it into a different document. Everything is just embedded so I can just work on that in Equatio and then immediately put it into my teaching resources or even lab reports. So, And yeah. we have someone who's also very excited for graphing as well. So yay, with all things graphing today. <laughs> Amazing. OK, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna, so uh, before we start, just where do we find Equatio? Uh, Equatio comes in two major forms. It comes in an extension form. So whatever browser you're using, you can download that from uh, the, for example, I'm using Chrome. I downloaded it from Chrome Web Store. Or you can simply just head on over to text.help, uh, that link over there uh, to get your Equatio. If you're a teacher, you get a premium access. So make sure you fill out that form so that you can unlock all the premium tools that you have access to as a teacher. Today, what we're going to be focusing on is the extension. So if you have installed it properly, you'll notice that on the top right corner right there, there is a light blue rhombus shape. Uh, 
that it's telling you that you have properly installed Equatio. So we're just going to be using that particular extent, uh, the extension version of Equatio today. Alrighty, so let's get started. Oh, sorry. <laughs> with demo. So uh, as I've mentioned before, we're going to get started with writing equations. So let's just open up a Google Doc right there. Uh, so if you don't know how to do that, we simply just open up a doc and then we just type docs.new and then it will open an untitled document here. Um, if we have installed our extension, we are just going to open up the Equatio. So click on that extension there and you should see the Equatio toolbar to pop up at the bottom. So as you can see right here, I have my Equatio toolbar and we're just gonna really focus on the first two uh, option right there. So we're just gonna click on the equation editor. So you'll see that there's a little sigma and then there's like a typing icon there. We're gonna type on that and we're gonna just type some math there. And Equatio is actually quite, um, it's fantastic in terms of it's predictive. So if we're just writing out any sort of function, so y is equal to x squared, you can just simply type the square as shift six um, plus four. And then what's great about this is that it's not limited to a single line equation. You can actually type multiple lines of equation by um, typing enter. And I'm actually in my second row and I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit so you can see. And if let's just say I'm doing functions and I want the students to talk about limits, I can actually just type in limit and it is going to predict that it knows that it wants the limit function. So I'm going to tap that. And I want to look for as x goes to infinity. And again, it will give me that symbol. And I can just continue on to my uh, function right there. Equals what? And I can just keep going on and on. And what's great about this multiple line function in the equation editor is that I can type a bunch of questions right then and there and then simply select insert math. And it's just going to do that magic and it will insert into my Google Doc as an image. So as you can see, And uh, I've selected the option to be extra, extra large in the image just so I can resize it accordingly. So I'm not necessarily losing resolution there. So this is one way of typing out equations. So in terms of math, there's plenty of functions that it automatically knows. Uh, it, what I really, really love as a chemistry teacher is that it already has embedded a bunch of chemical equations, like the common ones. For example, if I have, um, methane. If I'm looking for methane, it knows exactly I'm looking for CH4. So I simply just have to tap that with oxygen. And I can just have arrow for my equation, <laughs> hydrogen, so water. So as well, we have a, yeah. sorry to cut you off there. We have a question. Um, so some of the, uh, someone notices, so Krista said that she's not noticing her predictions showing up. Is that because she doesn't have a premium account? And so, um, yes, that is what's happening. But uh, if you do fill out the form, um, when you so when you apply, uh, when you assign uh, to Equatio, there's a form that you can fill out and that will get you, it takes about 24 hours to switch the account over to a premium. So all teachers will have premium accounts, even if your board doesn't, uh, subscribe to Equatio, uh, and then you will get the um, predictions coming up. Exactly. Yeah. So the prediction is definitely something that I, I use myself constantly because without, I, I'm sure, I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time trying to format superscript, subscript, especially when it comes to uh, chemical formula. So uh, when I go for like nuclear notation, I can immediately uh, type out like the mass number, the proton number, and um, you know the charge. However, like notice how like everything is aligned properly. If you were to do it normally on like Google Doc with superscript, subscripts, they don't necessarily align. And that bothered me so much as a chemistry teacher. Um, with the nuclear symbol that's already embedded in here, you can obviously change the element accordingly uh, to a different type of element. And I, this is just one of the few things that Equatio has in terms of prediction. Um, if I wanted to type particular equations, so for example, in math, I know we 
I always have to remind my students, what is the quadratic formula? You simply just have to type out quadratic and it will show you the entire quadratic formula. And so I also use the prediction tool uh, in Equatio to create uh, equation sheets for my students that are specific for particular topics before their topic test. So then I don't have to, you know, go online and download a particular one and then ask them to like, you know, cross out certain equations and not focus on that. I can actually create unique uh, reference sheets for my students for their assessment using this prediction tool. And, you know, because my students are also using it as well, so they know exactly what variable belongs to what. Um, within the equation editor, what I also really wanted to point out, in addition to typing out multiple lines, you notice that when I'm typing out variables, um, everything is actually um, italicized. So when letters are italicized, they're telling you that it's a variable. Uh, you can also toggle on the insert text for an instruction. So, And you'll notice that this entire instruction is now formatted as a text format. And once you're ready for that, you can simply just insert math and it will do the same thing again. It will do its magic and then put it in as a picture. And if you want to edit this thing again, you simply just have to click on this uh, picture and then select edit math at the bottom right. And you can just edit the math accordingly. And you can just actually replace um, four to another value. Let's just say it's, and I wanna make it one over two. So then I got out of my text format and then now I can simply either insert math and then I have another question right there. So Isabel, is yep. this how students, so if I gave this document to a student, like say the quadratic formula, yeah. could then, would Equatio solve it for me or how would my students go about to, like, to add their work or add their ideas to this? Yeah, so that's exactly it. So when I send it to my students, I would do something like the first document here where I have a bunch of questions uh, without the answer there. So I would put in a question mark just to indicate to them that they need to solve for it. So all my students have to do once I've shared this Google Doc is that they click on that image, select edit math, and they just can type in their answer here. And they can just, uh, I also ask them to then color code their answers so I know uh, just visually what's happening. Like I can just see whether somebody has answered their homework or not, uh, if they had changed their color. So yeah, um, exactly what you said, essentially just going back to that image and then going to the bottom right corner, edit math, and then just replacing the answer with whatever they think the answer is. And that's how I assess my students in terms of homework. Uh, yeah, so that's why I love Equatio about that <laughs> because it's so easy to edit. Like you don't have to like delete or reinsert a particular math. You can just immediately edit it within the question to submit your answer there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just there... gonna say I love love your tip of changing the color with the students with their answer because I think that is going to be so helpful for teachers to t draw their attention to see when students have turned things in, if they've completed it. Uh, I love that extra tip. Yeah, so in terms of uh, the quadratic formula right there, um, if you really want your students to solve um, for the quadratic formula, I would uh, keep the equation right there and they can actually go in and replace the variables. So let's just say they already figured out what A, B, and C are. They can actually show you what uh, if they got it correctly, if they type in the variables within the equation themselves, and it will not solve it for them. But in terms of process work, you can actually see um, if the students are getting it, like if they're able to sort of solve their, you know, quad quadratic, quadratic equations, if they got everything correctly, um, by showing you they whether they can replace the variables with the correct value. So that's what I use in terms of seeing if the students are able to demonstrate their understanding instead of just sort of typing it all into their calculator and then showing me the answer. This is really explicitly asking them to demonstrate their thinking and their understanding this way. So I still give them the formula, uh, the quadratic formula, and they just replacing variables. And I can do the same thing with um, other things. So for example, in chemistry, we talk about the ideal gas law a lot. And 
these are all various variables that the students can also plug in as well. So like pressure is another value, volume. Uh, we have N mole and then R is a constant, T is for temperature. So you can always use the formulas as like a starting tool to really prompt the students to demonstrate their understanding and their thinking if they're able to sort of plug in the correct values there. So, so that's why I love using the equation editor. Um, and one thing I really wanted to bring your attention, especially with the chemical formulas. So let's just say if I go into potassium, I can actually scroll down and see a bunch of different salts that are made from potassium. Um, and that's that's fantastic because like I know equatio is adding on to more and more um elements. But uh, one thing that I was actually looking for in particular, I was looking for potassium manganate. And unfortunately, it doesn't have it. So I can actually type it in where I can just put in potassium MNO subscript four. But that takes a lot of typing and also requires me to inherently know that shift underscore means subscript. So one thing that I really wanted my students to start to get used to is using LaTeX as a as a formula editing tool and also as a way of entering their formula. So if I select LaTeX here, you can also see how the math is going to show up on the right hand side. And then you'll see that your LaTeX is on the left hand side. Um, so as you can see here, I'm just simply typing out text because formulas are often text forms, and I can just type it in like so. And then underscore stands for subscript, and I can have four here. So I'm just trying to get the students used to uh, underscore always represents subscripts. And then if I use x to the power of two, that's superscript, as you can see over here. Um, because a lot of my students are used to writing their formulas like this. And, and also a lot of my students are programmers. So like they are used to some of the syntax that they would normally use in LaTeX. So they're just borrowing some of those terms in to LaTeX. Because if you notice in math, if I were to type out things, I would still rely heavily on the prediction tool. And I would still have to scroll through and then click versus if I'm only on LaTeX, then I would my hands would only be on the keyboard for the entire time, which really reduces a lot of time when it comes to, you know, uh, analyzing multiple lines of equations. If my students are fluent in LaTeX, then they are able to really, you know, maximize their time in terms of like writing out all the mathematical expression that they need for a lab report and then get on to the analysis part versus trying to hope for the best. Like the prediction tool is really going to help them. Um, I do find that some of my students who may not be comfortable with uh, LaTeX, they do tend to just focus on the equation editor piece in terms of inserting their, their expressions as well as math. And that's totally OK. I just know that there are some of my students who do want that extra um, you know, challenge and just <laughs> because they can format a lot more in terms of in LaTeX. So um, that's another way that you can insert equations using LaTeX. And we, we are going to have some time to try it out as well uh, to give you some time to play around with it. And so just as a reminder, our equation editor is that little sigma symbol with the type uh, icon there. And we can just use the prediction tool to type out various equations. We know that there are some key equations. If you have your premium signed up, just make sure you turn on math, chemistry, as well as formula predictions on. So then whatever you type out, you will have access to that whole bank of resource equations, constants, all of that. Uh, just at your fingertips. Uh, some of the things that I've highlighted, the nuclear symbols, which is a huge thing in my course in chemistry where everything needs to be aligned. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense and it confuses people. Uh, and then also, there's also values with different bases. So you can actually just simply type base and it will immediately uh, give you that option to put in different bases. We've also mentioned LaTeX over here. I just have a little short reference for you. So if we use the uh, shift six symbol there, we have access to a superscript. If we uh, use backslash text and in the squiggly bracket, writing that word, it will give you a complete um, 
it will format that text into a text format. Right arrow, left arrow, all of that are very important for me as a chemist. And then finally, LaTeX has access to a bunch of different Greek symbols. So if you do the backslash type alpha, it will simply give you the alpha symbol. So let me just show you how that, that's going to look like. If we go into LaTeX, so backslash alpha, and it's going to give you, oops, sorry. And it's going to give you that alpha symbol. And you can do that for, for many, many different uh, Greek symbols. So you can do that with beta, and it will give you all the capitalized Greek symbols. So uh, it's just a really good tool for my students to just sort of recall, because some, some of them may recognize the symbol, but they don't necessarily know the name. So they wouldn't like call that like a little A thing. Um, so really <laughs> hammering home with the uh, LaTeX allows my students to really practice between naming uh, variables and also understanding what they look like in real life. And then the last bit that I really uh, think it's so important for us as teachers, because sometimes you just don't want to reinvent the wheel, is the screen grab tool. So I know that some of you might have like PDFs, and if you have the desktop version of Equatio, you can do that by all means. If because we're only focusing on the extension, we can actually just Google any sort of worksheet and just simply do a screen grab of any equation that you see. And then you can copy that equation or edit that equation and then insert that into your doc right then and there. So screen grab is like a really powerful tool to sort of you know, grab what amazing questions that you see online without having to retype everything. Because we all know that when you're retyping something, even though you are, focused, there's bound to be some mistake. You know, a plus might be a minus or su a superscript. You might have inadvertently typed it as a subscript. So screen grab is a really fantastic tool for you to capture any sort of equation from pre-existing documents or even just from images. So right now, I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes. So let's just play with the prediction tool in Equation Editor. I've given you a prompt here uh, where you are just going to type out this particular equation just simply using prediction if you have access to that. So instead of typing CH4, I want you to really type out the name, methane, oxygen. And then next thing, type out the following in LaTeX as well. Um, if you have X. N plus Y, N equals to Z. And what do you see? What do you see the math look like uh, in, on the right-hand side? And then finally, you can just feel free to go over to Google, try and search up for your favorite molecule, uh, molecular formula or your equation. You can look up your quadratic formula or like the Euler's theorem, anything. Just try and see, use screen grab and edit it in equation editor. And as always, we have our Google form. Let us know if you have any questions, and we're here to answer. So we, we have a question. I was actually wondering the same thing. So Jeanette asked, can students rearrange some of the variables inside of like the equation? So if you're solving for um, like area formula and you're only given like certain sections of it, can they, can they rearrange some of those functions in there? I'm wondering if that's a possibility. I would imagine it would be the same thing as sort of editing. So let's just say we have our ideal gas law here, and then we have PV equals to NRT, and you want the students to sort of isolate for V instead of well, anything. Let's just try and isolate for V. Um, all I'm going to do is just um, do this divided by. I would actually ask my students to just sort of copy and paste various variables to arrange it like so. And just so, so as you're working through here, you you hit the divide sign. So when as soon as you hit, as soon as you typed in divide, that little bar, the the, the quotient bar comes across, yeah. and uh, or slash or whatever it is, and then therefore you can then cut and paste the very variables to rearrange things. Exactly. So uh, you can do the divide sign, or you can actually type over. So you yeah. can also do that as well. So if you know that it's n text rt over. So then again, you have access to the same thing as well. So um, you can either do the slash, type over. It will give you those blank spaces for you to enter. Um, if you do want your students to sort of fill in the gaps, I also really like just do it, leaving it blank and just inserting. Uh, and then 
in terms of the image that it shows, all you're really seeing is just V is equal to blank. But when I ask my students to edit it, they can actually go into this picture, select edit math, and they'll see that there are two blank spaces, two gray spaces that's asking them to type in. So what's the missing variable here? Like if we're talking about ideal gas law, I can actually ask them to tell me like, how are you gonna rearrange this particular uh, equation? So show me. So it's a really great like, um, so this is one way that I also check for understanding in terms of assessment as learning, uh, just sharing them a doc with unknown variables there and then ask them if they're able to rearrange particular documents, uh, particular equations, uh, in addition to using Google Forms. Yeah. How much, uh, yeah, so I see, Jessica, you asked a question, how much time do you spend teaching the students to use Equatio? Um, yeah, we can definitely address that uh, at the end of the session, we can talk about that a little bit now. In terms of for me in the lesson, if I want my students to type a full-fledged lab report, I give them, I, it's almost like a bit of half hour every day. So I would say maybe like a lesson and a half was sufficient because the students are able to pick up Equation was very intuitive is what I found. And because um, later on, we're going to talk about graphing and because I know uh, our math department uses decimal quite heavily so they already know how to manipulate all of that within the graphing calculator all I really had to teach them is how to use the equation editor and like with the prediction tool that's available to them even if it's not necessarily available to them they are able to sort of take advantage of the superscript subscripts very very easily um, yeah uh, it's not a lot of time, I would say, but uh, all that being said, they are high school students. So I, I wonder <laughs> if elementary students uh, would take a lot of time. Yeah, Jonathan or Katie. No, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say quickly before we have to move on, like it's, it's it is really intuitive and often it is given like 10 minutes to play with the, like all the buttons because they all want to play with the buttons. And then by then they all figure out, they figure it out quickly. And uh, I know when I work with my older students, they they easily get into equations and they know what to do. Uh, they, exactly. What they do need is the list of like what equations are possible for them, and uh, and it's all there for them. So the nice thing with the premium license as teachers, we have that prediction. If students are just using the free ones, they would have to then have a list that could be um, generated. But yeah. um, it is still worth it. So and then when you get to graphing, it's even better. All righty, so let's get into graphing. I know that this is like some of your uh, burning questions right there. Uh, so if we are uh, going back to our document here, so we talked about equation editor, we talked about our LaTeX editor, we're gonna get into a graph editor right there. So it looks like a little cosine, sign? <laughs> I don't really remember, okay. Um, so again, it, this looks like, um, if you are familiar with Desmos, uh, you can actually very, you, you'll know how to do this. So we're just gonna type in our line a best fit. Uh, well, just so 2x plus 1. So I have a, a simple line with some of the variables here. So that's great. So if I, I can graph particular functions there, if I'm not really, I don't really want to show this particular line, I can actually go into the gear button. So if I go back there, so it's right there in the top right corner, the gear icon there, I can actually change the way it looks. I can make it dotted line. I can make it points. I can also change the color of my graph accordingly. Um, so when I'm asking my students to do transformation, I do ask them to do the transformation and then convert it into a different color. Again, it's just for me to see visually whether they got it or not, and also whether they're reading the instructions or not. Um, and then another thing um, that I really like to show, instead of just showing the graph, if I'm asking my students to then deduce the equation, I can actually convert it into a table. Um, and so with that table, um, that's really helpful because then there are explicit points within the function that my students can sort of call, recall um, and sort of use. So let's just say this is um, a graph that I really want my students to sort of analyze. I'm just gonna zoom in and out to find the correct. So I have about five points there. I'm ready to go and I'm just gonna insert graph here. So same thing, it's just going to do its magic and it's going to 
insert it as a graph. So uh, again, this is a really, really fantastic way to sort of do interactive worksheets. Uh, like I've mentioned, I can actually use a the graphing editor to sort of ask them uh, what the transformations are going to be like. So I can just go again, simply students have to just click on the image. And then if they have Equatio extension turned on, they can just select edit math. And immediately they are brought into the graphing calculator where they can actually, um, you know, change accordingly. So if I'm asking my students, like, what is the next point onwards? Can you predict it? So they're going to type in three and then they're going to see that there is another point there. And they can actually double check that. Um, Let's just say if you are teaching generalized terms, so you don't actually have an explicit function, you can actually just put in variables. So we know our line equation mx plus b, and then you notice that m and b is registering as an additional variable. So you can actually add slider for both of them. And what that means is that I can actually change the slope accordingly. So this is a really, really good tool for me to show what does a positive slope look like? And what does a zero slope look like? What does a negative slope? So it really gets my students to, um, and I really like using the, what do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder tool when I'm, I'm doing my graphing uh, editor where I'm just sliding particular variables and just ask my students, what they're really noticing with the function. And then same thing with the B, if I were to change up the value for B, what is really happening with the function? Um, can you answer me? Like, what, what, what do we say? And so it's really asking them to use the visual to then explain what's happening with the Y intercept and what's happening with the slope. That seems such an important tool, like, like, like just changing and noticing and naming. And I, and I know like, the great my grade nines when they start talking about linear fun and then how that translates into the other transformations as they get older. Do you want yeah. to show that one more time just to see like how you got to that that point? Yeah, for sure. So again, um, if I'm just going back to my equation, so we know our graphing calculator here, uh, we are just just typing in a generalized equation here. So our function y, and then we always have x. Any other variables is just going to register as an additional variable. So m and b here is registering that it could be manipulated. So it's going to prompt you immediately to add a slider. So simply just click on add slider, and you'll see that you have the option to sort of change the values for m and change the values for uh, b. And you, you can do this for any equation, as long as you have um, a variable. So for I'm gonna just add another one. So I have y equals to x squared plus c. Let's just say that. And then again, it notices that c is another variable that you can um, change. And then I can very much change that accordingly. So I know transformation is a very uh, difficult concept for some of the students to understand because is it like a horizontal compression? Is it a horizontal stretch? They really struggle with that. And so like writing out the generalized form of the transformation equation with a quadratic equation, um, it's really helpful for my students to sort of see what's happening. And again, you can always change the color if you're not satisfied with that color. So, and then once you're ready, just insert that. It will always do its magic and then insert it as an image. If the students are, like as, at this point, my students are familiar with the fact that they see an image, they probably know, they will know that they need to click on it and then to see if they need to edit the math or not. So yeah, uh, that's why I love using uh, graphing calculator. Just the visualization piece of it um, has been really, really helpful because uh, I know when I learned how to graph, I had to use, we had to have a stack of graphing paper and just constantly like graph the, these different points. And if you messed up one of the graphs, that's it. Then there goes another piece of paper. So with this graphing calculator, it's almost like they, they have it at the tip of their fingertips and my students online can have access to this. My students here in person can also have access to this. So in terms of like an accessibility and equity piece, everybody's getting the same experience. And that's really important for me as a teacher. So just as a uh, repeat, we just did graphing calculator. I'm just gonna give you a couple of minutes and I gave you a prompt here uh, just to try and draw out the graph here. Like y is equal to three times x minus two to the power of 
two minus one. And then just try and select the gear icon as well as the table icon to just and see if you can like convert the table of icons to a function or vice versa. Can students create a graph if they have a data table with values of X and Y axis? Yes, um, yes, they can. So they don't necessarily have to type straight into the graphing calculator as a form of a function. If you have access to the table, you can just simply type in where the x's are and what the y values are, and then it will automatically create the graph for you. So yeah, they can do it the other way around. Great question. I absolutely love this. This has been fantastic, um, super helpful. And I love that um, additional piece of going kind of in reverse of what you're talking about with that table. Um, and I just wish this was around when I was in high school because I was also that that student with the multiple options. And if you just messed up one, like the whole thing. And I just just watching that transformation was huge. And I absolutely love that you can teach your students to click on it, edit it, and then even like do it on their own or live with you, which is awesome. Yeah. So we, and I, oh yeah. Keep going. Oh no no go ahead. No, I know that a lot of my students really, really struggle with graphing because, you know, in labs, we have access to all the X values, all the Y values, and then all my students had to like type it manually into Google Sheet. And then that's another learning curve where they have to learn how to insert the chart, all of that. Whereas um, in our graph, if we were to click on that, if we have access to the table, so if I go into the gear, I'm just gonna change that into a table, I can just easily change all my X values and all my Y values accordingly, and then it will um, change it. As long as you are sort of, um, yeah. Uh, and just a reminder, don't forget our form right here with your questions. And I'm just gonna kind of keep putting that up a couple of different times for you guys as well. Perfect, thank you so much. So Isabel, we have a question. Um, yeah. Can you actually try, can you demo how to put the data in? Like for example, of those experimental data, um, what, 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 what would that look like? That was from Jeanette, so. Yeah. Um, um, I think we demo I am, that. Okay, I am cognizant of time and I know that assessment piece is very important, but we can definitely address that. So uh, any sort of questions that are not answered, just make sure you keep an eye out for the email that is gonna be sent your way with the recording as well as all the additional resources. So if I don't have time to answer that question, Jeanette, just feel, uh, keep your eyes peeled for that email and you might receive a video uh, on that uh, because I do want to make space for assessing students using Equatio. Yeah, you can, they can also add their email into the, um, oh, yes. and we can, we can come back to it if you want to, I think in the form, if not, exactly. just put it, just put it in the, just put it in the question and we'll email you right back. Yeah, yeah, feel free. Okay, so assessing students. Again, I've, I've briefly mentioned it in terms of assessment as learning to formatively assess my students using Google Docs, but we all know and love Google Forms, or if you're in Microsoft school, Microsoft Forms do the same thing. Um, as long as you have your extension installed, Anywhere you see that you are inserting a text, you'll see the option of this blue, um, again, equation editor icon that, that you have access there. And that's telling you that you do have access to all things Equatio. So I am going to click on that. Sometimes it takes a while to load. <laughs> And as you can see here, I already have access to my lovely equation toolbar at the bottom. So let's just get started to just insert an equation. I'm just going to insert a normal equation, fx, 4x cubed minus 2x, like that. I'm just going to insert that. And again, it's going to do its magic. And like how it was inserting its equation, it's going to be inserted as an image, as you can see here. So when my students are seeing this question, they're now seeing it as a form of a question, uh, as, an, as an image. And I can type different options. So instead of an equation, you can also type out a graph. So again, if we have access to that equatio icon, I'm just going to go into my graph calculator, my graph editor. <laughs> and I am going to type in different graph. Insert. 
And same thing, it is going to do its magic. And now you can also insert graphs as a form uh, of an answer. I know, I don't know about you, but I had spent so much of my time just sort of screenshotting, saving it, and then uploading it to Google Form before I knew that I can easily do this. Um, and then now every question that you're doing is uniquely your own. So like there, you don't have to worry about like potentially students taking screenshots of this, sending it to Chegg, asking someone to answer this. Everything is right there. And so the next thing, so let's just say I typed in everything there and I'm gonna uh, add, create this as a form of a short answer question instead, because I wanted to see how this is going to look like on the student end because the students also have access to this so though you don't have to actually type a bunch of random symbols to show you exactly what's happening they can also have access to equatio if you're sending them this form so i'm just seeing this form as a student side i'm just going to refresh this so i see this untitled question and because i have equatio installed i do have access to the insert math function so as a student, I can just click on that. And the same thing, I will have access to the equation editor. So as a student, I can easily type in, let's just see the derivative of this function and insert math. And if I'm okay with this, I can just simply select uh, submit. And on the teacher side, if we're going back to the teacher's form, if I go into responses, I can actually see a student has submitted a response there and I can just immediately see it. It won't be like a link that I have to click onto it. It's right there. The image is right then and there. So it is a really, really powerful tool for you to assess students, especially now the fact that like the students can demonstrate their understanding using equation editor without you having to just create a bunch of multiple choice questions. They can now actually submit a graph for you. They can also submit a multiple line work through uh, on Google Form. And so I, I hope that has been helpful. I know that the assessment piece is really, really important. At least for me, I always do daily quizzes, formative quizzes. So I'm gonna give you a couple of time, just try uh, and type in a question. You, you're more than welcome to use LaTeX if you feel up to the challenge. You can also use the equation editor, try and insert a graph as well. and. If you haven't tried out screen grab, make sure you also try that out and see if you're able to copy and paste that particular screen grab um, equation into a form. And let us know if you have any questions. Again, it's that Google form that we have been using. Just let us know if you have any questions right there. Yeah, and, and I know also, um, I don't know if you wanna show that uh, demo, Isabella, about, about inserting the math spaces so the kids can actually respond back with the, in the form itself with their own thinking. So now, you know, when we put, we, most of the times in forms, I know we, we've always asked like very like specific, like multiple choice questions or inserting graphs, but we can actually add in a thinking question with math spaces. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was contingent on time. I guess we do have space for math spaces. Ooh. Um, this is something that I really love because uh, in terms of like a manipulative, like this is like a virtual space where my students get to sort of play around with things. At least for me, I know um, for, I'll just, so as, I'm gonna show you right now. I know that there's some STEM tools right there. Uh, we have access to three really, really fantastic STEM tools, the periodic table, scientific calculator, as well as the molecular viewer. So I'm gonna show you where you can have access to math spaces. Let's just go back to our doc here. Um, there are two ways for you to access math spaces. From the uh, document, from the equation toolbar at the bottom, uh, if you select insert math space, it will bring you to that math space which is just a blank canvas where you can just sort of design uh, and demonstrate your thinking right then and there. So as you can see, it's just a blank canvas, but you still have access to all these lovely tools that we were using before. So our equation editor, graph editor, what's new right now is the three extra icons that are at the, at the right hand side. Uh, and it's different types of shapes. So for me, there's like a huge thing uh, where you know, asking my students to demonstrate 
Bohr Rutherford diagrams in chemistry is a very, very important thing. Um, and in, I know normally if we were in the classroom, they would draw it out and they would sort of show it to me now. But now that I have some students who are online, some students who are in person, I don't really know how they're feeling about it. And in terms of for me assessing them, I would just pre-design a Bohr Rutherford diagram uh, circles for them. And I can just sort of ask them to write out the, draw the Bohr Rutherford diagram for sodium. And I can actually just make that into text because that's instruction. And I'm gonna insert that. And they will see this instruction right there. And I can just simply insert this and it, this whole math space will then be included into the document. And so when my students see this, they not only see the prompt, they also see the space that's for them to sort of work around with. Um, and, and, you know, with the different shapes, as well as the STEM tools, because they have access to the periodic table, they don't even need to like open a new tab, go Google periodic table, hopefully it's an accurate periodic table and then put in the uh, crucial information they can just simply stay on math space and have access to the periodic table right here and it's simply a reference table so they can find oh where is sodium sodium is right here so then and then if they click on it it gives them a bunch of information that's like breaking down what sodium is what the atomic mass what is the atomic number all of that and it's really, really extensive because, you know, when in grade 11, we talk about periodic trends. So those numbers, those values right there, they're very, very uh, important for my students to sort of have reference for. Yeah. Well, um, and I know we have we, we, we don't have much time, but that, that same math space, though, can be put into anything yes. that we have. Right. So we can put that same math space and insert it into a Google form uh, by using a, a paragraph question or or uh, inserting the actual space. So the kids can answer their question right there on the Google form. That's the more point that I was thinking of it. And then <laughs> uh, I know Jennifer, you you mentioned, is there uh, math manipulatives like algebra tiles? Those are in math spaces in the uh, in the tool section. So that little, that little shape, you can actually search for different, um, different, different uh, uh, tiles and things like that. And in our last session last week in the video, and we'll, we'll make sure that in, a, in our, follow-up email, you'll get all those uh, videos. You can see us using all of these tools in math spaces. So there's that, we, we did a whole section on that uh, during that part, but it's so powerful, those uh, those tools. Yeah, exactly. It's it's in shapes and then we go to the three timbits right there and we just have to search for it like tiles and then you'll see you have algebra tiles, X and Y group or X group, and you can just simply insert that straight into your document here, your math space and just resize it however you want. And then, yeah, it's, there's a lot of embedded ones. And like, I'm just teaching circuits right now. So we're, we're getting my students to understand like, how does a light bulb look like? And you can see right there, like, and so it's just sort of like testing my students, like, you know, if you can connect a light bulb on the negative terminal of the cell and then an ammeter on a positive terminal of the cell. So like, and then I would just sort of, put all of these little diagrams there for them to drag and drop, or they can just simply search it for more advanced students. So they can just simply go to the more shapes and just search for resistor, and then they will have access to that. And then they just have to construct the circuit accordingly. And so, yeah, it really does give my uh, students at home an opportunity to, even though they're not necessarily participating in the experiments, but they can still demonstrate that they are understanding some something <laughs> uh, using math spaces. I know uh, we have been, we have gone through a lot. So here is just a couple of activities. All of these images are linked. So when you have access to this presentation, just head over there. All of these are pre-made, uh, you know, worksheets, math spaces that are readily for you. Just simply uh, click onto it, and then you'll have access to it immediately. So I hope that has been helpful. And you know, your feedback really matters, and it really helps us become better. You know, for our next sessions to so that we can best address your needs. Um, yeah, if there's another question that we can have. Oh, I see Jeanette yeah, asked. Got, oh, yeah. We have a couple of questions. So Jennifer has asked about inequality number lines, not just shaded regions. 
Um, so I'm wondering if that's possible. Maybe probably in math spaces is yeah. probably where I, I can would see imagine that happening. so as well. Yes, because I would. Yeah, I would imagine that you would you can actually use the number line in the inequality and then just draw on it. Uh, yeah. yeah, as well. And, and then Equation does work uh, on Google Slides as well. So yeah. anywhere you have access to your extension that allows you to type in text, any sort of body of text, you can use Equation. So Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Forms, Word slide uh, pre or a uh, sheet Word. or yeah excel presentation. and presentation <laughs> yeah oh, it's, it's, it's trying to get every name right right um how do students put electrons in that Bohr rutherford design yeah um if i can just so i what i've mentioned there is one way of inserting math space and what you notice with that particular thing it's just for you to place a lot of objects but one uh two options that we didn't have access to, which is the infinity cloner, as well as the locking objects. We don't have access to, um, to that if we simply go into a doc or a form and just insert math space. Um, so if you want to allow the students to sort of insert electrons on that particular diagram, I would suggest you to go to the bottom left corner and then go to try equatio math space. Um, and then there you will have access to all the different math spaces that you have generated. Uh, I'll just go into the one that I designed for Bohr Rutherford diagram and I'll show you how it looks like in terms of the formatting. So same thing when we were inserting uh, circles, it was just going to the shapes and then dragging out different circles. But because I didn't want my students to sort of move those circles around, all I have to do is just go to this uh, circle. And then now because I'm on a different type of math space, I will have access to this lock toggle option. So if I lock this and I send this to my students, they don't they aren't able to change it at all. Like they can't move this. Obviously, as a teacher, I am able to move it and change it wherever I want. But if I'm locking all these different circles, then they can't move anything. So I like to keep my instructions locked so then they can't delete it accidentally. All my uh, orbit right there. And then what's helpful right here, if you can see, I have also toggled the infinity cloner right here. So if I toggle the infinity cloner for my electrons, if I send it to my students, they can constantly drag electrons from this circle. So they can just sort of place it uh, wherever they feel like it should be on the orbital, on the orbits. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's an important one to, to, uh, to look at is the being able to clone and that it's not there. And then you can just share that with your, your staff or, or your students to, to work through. Um, I know we have we're, we're, we have like two minutes left, and and uh, before our presentation is done, can you show the screen grab really quickly? Yes, for sure, time? of course. So we're, let's just go to uh, Google, and I'm just going to search um, ideal gas law, and we can actually head on over to image. Well, actually there was an image there. And let's just say I wanted to screen grab there. All I have to do is recall my equation toolbar, just make sure that I have access to that at the bottom. Let's wait, yeah. And then I'll see that I have all my lovely tools there. And I'm gonna click on this image because I just wanna enhance that to just make sure that it's all good. And I'm gonna click on the screenshot reader. So it's like a little dotted square. And I'm just going to highlight that. And it's going to do a little bit of thinking. <laughs> and it's actually reading this particular equation back to me. But if you go to the Timbits right there for more options, you realize that you have the option of editing it in Equatio. So over here, I can actually immediately edit a particular equation. If I'm good with this, you'll see that at the bottom right corner, I can actually copy this math as you know an image, as a LaTeX, however way you want. What I really like to do is just simply copy this math and go back to my document and then paste it into the equation editor that I was working through. So that's what I, in terms of workflow, that's what I would do. I would have like a Google search results there, pulling all the equations I need, and then copying it back to my doc here, where I have a working document with all my, you know, problems that I want my students to work through. 
Thank you so much, Isabella. That was amazing. I love it. Time savers for teachers and students. Good practice for both as well. Isabella, John, Katie, thank you all so much for sharing your Equatio knowledge with us. Uh, thank you, Text Help, for making this workshop possible for all of you here live today and all of you watching the recording because we know life as a teacher is busy. So being able to watch a workshop like this at, on your own schedule, not at a specific time, is definitely a game changer too. Go ahead, fill out that form on the screen right now for your feedback. This is also a great place that if you have a burning question where you're just like, ooh, I really wish I had a chance to ask blank, fill that in, make sure to include your email. Uh, there's a spot for it in that form and we'll be able to follow up. John, Katie, or Isabella will be the ones following up with you so you get all of their knowledge in that email. And if you have registered for this webinar here on um, our Cobblestone Collective webpage, you will be receiving an email with all of the goodies that these three have spoken about for the past hour. Thank you folks so much. We are going to call it. Have a fabulous morning, afternoon, day. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.